Landing on the water is rough as the hull of the Catalina seaplane contacts it, the plane decelerating from nearly 200 miles per hour to a slow float in less than a minute. Your brains are still fuddled from passing through the change in realities, horrors passing from your minds and away from your consciousness quickly, leaving only an impression of the terrors having accosted you, but enough to keep the cold sweat going. As vision clears and ears finally equalize pressure, the transition from the drops and pushes caused by turbulence to the swaying and bobbing of floating on water causes you to become queasy. This passes quickly, however, when you feel the aircraft jolt uh, laterally by at least a foot, putting each of you on your knees or leaning against the interior bulkhead of the Catalina as the rocking slowly calms again. Now, for you, Thuban, um, you suddenly find yourself displaced in the air about a meter, okay? Um, and it's away from the hull that, that you're with. You guys don't have to move your, your stuff at all. Okay. Uh, let's see. Against the interior. Okay. Everyone stops breathing for a moment. The only the only sound that of the water lapping against the surfaces of the seaplane, until another massive crash jars you out of place again. The bulk of the aircraft. What in the world? <laughs> Are we under attack already? The bulk of the aircraft shifts the opposite direction. A rivet pops loose, and the now open area around the rivet allows seawater to begin trickling in. Ah, shit. <laughs> and here's where I stop for a moment and hand out cards. And here's where we could use a mechanic. <laughs> <laughs> um, you would also need a Cherry Max rivet gun and, you know, just all kinds of stuff like that. So, uh, let me go ahead and uh, hand pull several cause them cards. Okay. Let me shuffle oh, these. And shuffle. And everybody gets one. Come on now. Come on. You can do it. That's a good boy. Okay. That's his line. <laughs> so let's see. That's Ginger and then Chris and then Captain Gonzalez and then Gamer X. And then dogfight. Oh, yeah, it does come up as dogfight. Okay. So there's your Cosm cards. And then I need... Uh, Wait a second. This isn't Core Earth. <laughs> oh, no. This is Orosh. <laughs> no wonder we felt so ill. This isn't my beautiful Cosm. This isn't my beautiful wife. <laughs> okay uh, um this sucks <laughs> <laughs> now uh you go back to only having four cards each i believe get that bug out of there so four and here we go again ginger chris oh i Jam. just got an interesting card game camera x and then is oh, honestly the least terrible card I could have pulled from this deck. Okay. So there's those. Uh Does any does anybody start with five cards? Mm, I, no, I don't think no. <laughs> I I think uh I think Penny is supposed to get an extra is it an extra no, possibility? No, not a card. No, it's not a card. No. Do you get an extra possibility though? I do. To start the scene. Okay, go ahead and add that possibility then. I should have, but I, I, we just, I won that when we rescued Shul. Does that up me to five or? You just add plus one. Okay. Because it, it says that you're, well, it says you're supposed to start with a minimum of four. That means you get an extra possibility basically at the beginning mm -hmm. of a scene. Okay, because I don't take people down to three uh, or, or down to four in your case. Or down below four, I should say. Uh, well, because we rescued Shul, this would make me at five. Yes, that's fine. Okay, just checking. Uh, that's yep. why I didn't add it before. Okay, let me get you all over to where I need you. Oh, yes, this is going to be delicious. 
sorry, sorry. I have a I have a Cosm card I could play just to yeah. just because. Do any of you have a Cosm card that says play immediately? It doesn't say it has to. So okay, it's, it says play while traveling to some sinister destination. <laughs> You're this, kind of this, seem, huh? this seems this seems appropriate. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I guess. So. Okay. Uh, so. So can I can I go ahead and play it? Um, sure. If you really want to, I mean, things are kind of bad now, so I, I'm not. Yeah, sure. <laughs> maybe Come save on. it for later once we get out of the sub for playing. Well, how, how much worse could it possibly get? Don't ever ever say that in a rush. <laughs> That's like I the would... one thing you never say. I friggin' love it. Okay, so let's see. Oh, let me get in here. In the oh, we're spot. the ones at risk here. Okay. Yeah, mostly and, you. And then Thuban. Why just me? <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Um, that's right. Thuban is huge. So that would he, be why he can't fit in a one meter by one meter space. I had forgotten about that. Uh, I had downsized him uh, for the other map that you all were in. All right, so that's basically what's going on there. And like I was, uh, I haven't transferred you guys over yet. <sighs> okay. Ah, uh, first airplane. world problems. Okay, can you can you guys all see this map? Yes. Okay. This bubble pops open as, of course, an entry exit, like I told you earlier. And you get you get this voice, like I said, in your head. Uh, and it seems to be coming from outside of that bubble, but you can't spot anything just yet. What do you guys want to do? How do you want to react? Okay, what? Hey, what exactly? Why don't you go check that out? <laughs> what? what? Hey, you're closest. What exactly was said? Okay, I believe introductions are in order. I am Chipper Fat, Demon of the. Well, it is a dimension you will never see and could not possibly understand. Explain anyway. Trust me, you don't want me to. I would have to put images in your mind, which I would like. Oh, but I don't think not? you will. And then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, and Thuban uh, kind of senses this. Uh, floating in the air, almost above the aircraft, but kind of level with the with the bubble outside. Um, uh, you see a, a kind of a floating little red, well, a small fat red blob comes into view and floats in the air above and outside the starboard machine gun cupola. A thing repulsive to all senses, an unnatural cloud of black dust floating about the body of this being as you continue to hear. I serve the Gaunt Man and protect this site in his name, awaiting one of his minions to deliver the key. Hast thou a key? The starboard cupola uh, window okay. swings open on its hinge, and the demon uh, waves whomever has the egg forward. Hey, uh, GM, I just dropped my I just dropped my Cosm card on the field. Uh, okay, where? There it is. It's uh, lower. Okay, ominous portents. Did you mean to drop it? Yep. Okay. As soon as, as soon as you said there was something awful that we were looking at, that was that was my cue. Okay, let's see something here. If the party happens upon a grisly discovery or sees a dark omen of some kind, for the rest of the scene, or the next, if the GM feels this is too near the end of the current scene, die rolls from possibility stand as rolled. They aren't at a minimum of ten. All Storm Knights gain three possibilities after this is over. Oh, you are going to hate uh, It just yourself. says all three Storm Knights gain three possibilities. Huh? I don't yeah, it, it says, doesn't say after it's over. Well, it doesn't say after it's over, but it's generally considered to be after it's over. Do you want me to read that? About Cosm cards? I, I think you should, because I think we get them right away. I really do. 
Okay. Well, let me get to the Cosm cards. Let's brainstorm what grisly events uh, this is <laughs> while he does that. Is uh, the egg suddenly covered in blood? Uh, well, it also says that you could see some dark omen. And and I'll uh, give me a minute, and I'll get back to that. I was just figuring that seeing some unearthly demon would have been good enough. You know, that's just me. I, I, yeah, I, I think it that. would. Well, that might be that might be part of it, or it might be a result of seeing that demon. Yeah, I also think you might have just made his threat to give us grisly images come true. Okay, yeah, there you go. actually. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Each player receives a Cosm card at the beginning of each act. If a player has a Cosm card left over from the previous act, it must be discarded and a new one drawn. The GM should shuffle all the cards for the current Cosm and redeal. Cosm cards are not destiny cards. They don't count against the player's hand size, and they never go into the action pool. They can be played whenever the card says is appropriate. Cosm cards reflect certain themes and world laws of the current area. Some have negative effects in exchange for possibilities for the hero or, f or even the entire group. Others might reveal secrets or lost treasures and have an effect on the story or the character uh, themselves. In a mixed zone, the player may choose which Cosm to draw from. Okay, well, in this particular instance, we're not dealing with that. Let's see, that's changing Cosms. We don't need to change Cosms, and it doesn't go anywhere after that. Right. Right. So you get the possibilities after you face whatever is on the Cosm card. That's what I've always uh, uh, known it as. But there's one more place that I can look. Uh, Torg Eternity Errata. And it comes up with Yon Page. Come on. You can do it. My computer has been running gangbusters all day. Now I've got like six windows open, and it's it's running like crap. Okay, Control F, which just crawled across my toe. Wow, what's going on tonight? I never you have really bugs in here. You really don't want to know. I never ever ever have bugs in here. So Control F. The giver fats after you. Probably. <laughs> Okay, so Cosm cards, uh, page one thirteen. Replace in a mixed zone. Uh, the player may choose which car Cosm to draw from. With in a mix zone, the Cosm drawn from is determined randomly. Well, that's new. Uh, okay, where's the next one for cards? That's threat cards. I don't want threat cards. With the ingenious perk, do you discard the extra cards drawn if a good or outstanding success is achieved? This is for a character that I have. Uh, yes. So any extra cards. So I get to keep one. Another player gets to keep one. Okay. Uh, we generally do not recommend taking away things from the Storm Knights to balance large groups. Here are some suggestions. Uh, give them cards. Give the bad guys cards. Okay, Drama Destiny Cosm card questions. Uh, that's near the top. We've already... Can the GM play with just a subset of Cosm cards or must the deck include all of them? Just a subset. Uh, do, 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 do. What happens when the Destiny deck runs out of cards? Destiny cards, Destiny cards, new cards. I am not finding anything else about Cosm cards in here. Cosm cards. Okay. Does Reality Surge allow you to trade in your current Cosm card for one from your Cosm? Uh, no. Well, the, okay. That's just... Let's see. My players often play all of their Cosm cards immediately at the start of an adventure. Does the GM have some leeway? Wow. Never even thought of that. Okay. Uh, Cyber Papsy Cosm cards. Mana Surge Cosm cards. You know what? It doesn't say. So I'm going to presume that that is the, the GM's call. Okay. All right. So, let me read this again to make certain. The party happens upon a grisly discovery or sees a dark omen of some kind. You've got both in this particular instance, because I'm about to give you something for the rest of the scene, or the next, if the GM feels this is too near the end of the current scene. Die rolls from possibility stand as rolled 
All Storm Knights gain three possibilities. That is at the end of the description of the card. And that goes until the end of the scene. I'm going to say that you get the possibilities at the end of the scene. Okay. 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 And, and, all right. Okay. Aww. So. But okay. The, the, the grisly discovery that you see is, uh, uh, is of course this little red fat demon that is surrounded by what appears to be black dust that has a life of its own. It kind of just floats around him, orbits around this little red demon. Okay. Uh, matter of fact, uh, where did I put Jibberfat at? Okay. Uh, bad guys. Are you going to tell me that I didn't? I, I know I put Jibberfat in here. He's on the tail of the airplane. Well, That's yes, so but I'm, I I mean his sheet. I, I kind of need oh. his sheet. What the hell happened to Jibberfat? I put him in here. Uh, oh, there it is. There he is. That's a good boy. Okay. So, uh, can I drag this onto the table? I can. So, let's... Maybe? Okay, there we go. So, let me do that. And that to minimize. And let me get rid of shawl. Got to hit that X in a particular way. Get rid of the fighter pilots. Hello, fighter pilots. Okay, that's all right. I can close them that way. Come on, open. And close that one that way. All right. So, um, that's weird. Why did it do that? All right. So, let me kind of size this thing up. This is what you see. This Off the Ew. tail of the craft. Okay. I know I just moved it, but... And he's floating in midair. He's got his knees wrapped up kind of around his stomach and his feet are hanging free. Um, and you can see why he has demon, such a he nasty wanted, little voice. Hmm? He said he wanted the egg. Yes. The egg? Mm-hmm. What egg? Oh, dear. You guys take a moment and talk amongst yourselves. This will apply specifically to... Actually, well, Mo probably wouldn't know, but Andrew would. Um, well, yeah, Andrew does. Mo has no idea what egg. Mm -hmm. I got no clue what you guys are talking about. So. Right. Oh, that delicious-looking thing we found when we first met. Huh? Um, uh, gold. Actually, yeah. That's right. Yeah. You saw that on the... Um, uh, on the incredible digging device. Will you tell me bring it, bring it into the uh, digger? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The Fabergé egg. Yes, the thing that looked yummy. <laughs> you actually eat golden gems. I thought you were a vegetarian, not a mineral or mineralitarian or whatever that is. Oh, that's not organic. Oh, that's a shame. That means I can't eat it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna get rid of of the shoal or the. Um, Jibber fat picture. You guys good? Yeah. yeah. It's a creepy little thing. Yes. That's why I, I enjoyed putting it up there. So. Like, like and with that black dust around it, like. Yep. Pig bin Probably bin. post on the internet hate threads. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't go into internet hate threads. I create them. But. Um, <laughs> it all makes sense. <laughs> okay. It all comes together. All right. yeah, that, that, that doesn't help. What egg? Uh, yeah. The... Come on, Ginger, or I'm sorry, Peaches and Chris ought to remember this. You, uh, It's what Ginger picked up in the jungle, uh, in the living land. Uh, it was beside, beside Moe's body. That was beside Moe's body. That's right. Oh. Yeah, I know what it is, but I don't know if I want to get such, the journal, too. such a fabulous treasure, a lost Russian Fabergé egg to <laughs> that <Everything>. other thing. <laughs> Why don't you go talk to him about it? You know? What would Actually, I possibly... Better yet, send the band. 
What? Uh, what did I do to you? He's such a he's such a glib guy. I mean, you know, it's uh, I, I, I'm a speciesist. I I I don't like style lynchers. <laughs> well, if we're I suppose if now is the time to air our grievances, I have to say I'm not a big fan of Lanala. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Um, now, now, boys. Now's not the time for a theological discussion. Tell you what, Very well. talk about it to her. Um, <laughs> here, Chris, I, I hand it to you. You, you talk to that thing. Okay, hang on just a Not second. Her. I'm trying to type something up real quick. Um, yeah. Um, she hands, she thrusts the egg at uh, Chris Cross, and then she gives, she crosses herself. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> go, go with Lanala, Chris. I push him forward. <laughs> you ass. <laughs> No, yeah, go with literally with Suban. any other deity. Thuban has to kind of squeeze himself against the ceiling of the plane, uh, the roof of the plane, in order to let uh, Chris get by. Yeah, mostly I, picking, mostly I was just picking on Thuban because nobody can get past him. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> So I kind of walk up to there and, you know, pull out the Fabergé egg and like, okay. hold it up and was like, this it? Excuse me. Yes. Okay. Now, AC end. Now, why didn't that play the whole thing? What the hell? Oh. Damn it! You guys aren't supposed to see that. <laughs> the only person that's supposed to see that is the ban. All right, leave ominous portents where it is, please. I need to be able to, to see what's going on. Um, we, we do not see what you just sent into the text chat. Thuban, uh, that basically plays through your mind. Excuse me, can you please not hold two conversations at once? It's quite rude. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Chris, you you walk up and and try to hand the egg. Uh, no, to... no, not handing. I'm just showing him okay. right now. Okay. He says, "Release it, release it to me, and and everything will be well." I kind of pull it back up, and it's like, "How do I know I can trust you with it?" You don't know anything, but I know I like pretties. And I know the Gaunt Man will forgive me for this. I don't want to crest the Gaunt Man. I'm much scared of him than I am you. Actually, this has been on my mind for the past few minutes. I've been trapped underground. I'm assuming that this Gaunt Man is some kind of big deal. Are you actually asking that? or Yes. Okay. The Ban is asking that because he's been underground since the invasion started. Oh, okay. You do not know the Gaunt Man. <laughs> you do. You will soon enough. <laughs> Hand me the egg. Why? <laughs> because I'll go away. Get, 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 and... him to, get him to sign something about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was like, I was like, yeah. you seem like a demon, and you demons are usually bound to their word. So I would will want your word to this. I want a contract that you are not stealing the egg. What and you that you'll do? go away for, for how long? What do you want to do? Shake my hand? No. <laughs> you. He, as long as it's he, not slimy. He, he floats what a little are bit you closer. Going to do with me? And he what's extends going to happen his hand. If don't give you the egg? Yeah, what's going to happen if I give you the egg? He floats out a little bit again. Well, if you really don't want to give it to me, I'll just have to kill you. And at that moment, at that moment, here's the egg. 
at that moment, you feel <laughs> you feel a, a massive bump against the the back the Maybe back end right like, here. I'll just have to kill you. I was like, nope. Here's the egg. <laughs> uh, he he. Uh, you just hold it out in your open hand. Yep. Okay. He puts out both of his hands as if to receive and kind of works them back and forth a little bit. And the egg floats out of your hand and towards him. You have made a very, very wise decision. Uh, but I'm going go to tell you something. Did. Stay away. Go away and stay away. You don't want to hear my warning? I, I, warning. Yeah, On second thought, don't listen to her. her. No, don't listen to them. Tell me. Oh, at least. Confusion. Confusion is my friend. It is so wonderful. And he pops out of existence. And all that's left behind for a few seconds is a, a cloud of, of black dust that is still orbiting, but seems to have lost what it was orbiting, so it eventually breaks up and falls into the ocean, disappearing. Now. I think we could have used that warning. Sir Peach, Just... that might not have been the most wise decision. <laughs> okay. So, um, hang on just a second. Let me get rid of old boy here. There he is. Okay, so you uh, the the waves calm. Okay, and um, you hear Jacques Lafleur in the front of the aircraft, and he yells, "Look, look, it's gone!" Uh, I look. What's gone? Uh, do you go back <laughs> towards the front of the aircraft? Yeah. Where you can look out the windows? Okay. Um, oh, wait a minute. That's right. Uh, actually, I, I... Well, that's okay. He points out towards the front left of the aircraft, over the wing. Okay? And I, I was supposed to do this in a different way. That's okay. I can... Come on. Get over there. Let me go to my map and background. Okay. So... Uh... Hang on just a second. I'm getting there. Okay, I was originally going to have this uh, here. He points out towards the front of the aircraft, front left, um, and you see the last... It, does anybody else go towards the front? I'm, I don't want to go out of the pole pilot chair. I yeah. don't because I won't fit. Okay. Well, if you said something, I'm... Yeah, we all turn around. Okay. Well, you, you, you can't really look out any portholes from where you're at. You would have to go to the front of the aircraft where there's glass. Um, and you, you look and see as the last of a bunch of clouds dissipates. Okay. And, and you see what appears to have been a, a large ish tornado uh, or, or sea spout disappear. Okay. It finally just dissipates and the sea becomes very, very calm. I'm glad I just quickly handed over the egg before I decided to make a show of power. <laughs> um, all right. So, by the way, was he offering tutoring lessons to anyone else? <laughs> what? What? He was carrying on two conversations at once. It was quite rude. He was also talking to me, offering some kind of magical tutoring lessons. I was going to say no because now is neither the time nor place for them. I uh, I agree with that assessment. And glad for you to own up that, about what he said. Or that he did try to say something. Thuban, you, you think about this for a second and you think he since he popped out of existence like he did, he was probably offering to take you with him. Uh, he apparently wanted me to come into his um, domicile, his study of some you sort. You got the impression it was into a demonic realm. Well, Santa Maria. No, it no, wasn't no. a very nice domicile. <laughs> Not a very you were nice good domicile. To say no. <laughs> okay. You were good to say no, mi amiga. So in the future, when a demon invites you into his home to teach you things, you say no. no. Well, I, I, no. I, 
I did say no. What's the problem here? I'm just saying. I'm just, you know, the the, the fact that there was a confusion, <laughs> consideration is kind of concerning. <laughs> Okay. And where are you uh, taking me, Chris? In hindsight, perhaps this gaunt man may have some connection to the Dark One. I know that necromancy is not the most savory magical art, so perhaps that has sorry, something what? to do with the lore. I'm sorry, what? Uh, the Dark One, uh, Uthorion, I think his name was. Uh, the one trying to conquer uh, Isle. I, I was. I, I'm go on from that part. I was. There was something about like weird. Never mind. Give it. You mean necromancy? Yeah, yeah, that part. That was the one I was concerned about. Oh yeah, he's a necromancer. Okay. Yeah, we should have probably covered that sooner. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. If it makes you uncomfortable, you can always look away. <laughs> look away look away okay so uh it is actually uh the you know everything calms down at this point okay it is not the end of the scene yet so you don't get your possibilities just you know what it's it's the end of that part of the scene and the rest of it is all paperwork so all of you you got lucky on this one go ahead and add three possibilities each Cool. <laughs> wow. You, I hate to be that guy, but if you think that was too soon, you could have the the uh, po the possibility like limits play over to the next scene. No, 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 no. I, I, I What it was supposed to be was uh, uh, Jibberfat and his sharks were supposed to beat the ever loving snot out of you. So, oh, and, and you guys and, and Chris actually managed to do something. Even if it was out of kind of a a chicken attitude, if you will, it was a good thing that he did. I've never had anybody hand over the egg. Did really? we do a bad? <laughs> did I've, we do a bad then? I I I've I've run this adventure four times now, and I've never had anybody uh, hand over the egg. So <laughs> I'm worried that giving him the egg may have screwed us in the long term. Oh no! Now we're friends. You you never know. Well, I'm it, not it, sure it, being it. friends with a demon actually improves our situation. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he won't kill us right away the next time we meet. I'm not sure that improves our situation. <laughs> <laughs> Let's let the voice in the sky finish narrating. Okay, well, actually, there's nothing to narrate at this point. Okay, I'm going to leave those as they are. Um, there's nothing really to narrate at this point. Uh, you're, what you've got is you've got to figure out what your next action needs to be, what the next portion of what you're doing needs to be. Now, let's, let's cover some facts real quick. You just finished handing a quote-unquote key to a demon who subsequently disappeared because he said that he was protecting the place. There was also a massive tornadic-like water spout that disappeared once the demon did. The seaplane stopped bouncing around um, once the demon disappeared. Okay? Okay. So, you've got the diary, or the you've got Professor Sharif's uh, book. Okay, um, and let me see. What else have I got for you? That's it. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna move these. Let's see. How how am I gonna do that? Hmm. I'll have to recreate the vehicles later if I need them, because I don't have any. Hmm. You know what? I could move those into the Nile Empire because they're Nile Empire vehicles. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay, I'm going to do a little bit of cleanup. I want you to take the information that I've just given you, talk amongst yourselves. Um, uh, for uh, Thuban and Dogfight, if you want to read uh, Professor Sharif's journal, first you should probably have get some. Okay, pro first you should probably get some description about why and how Peaches has that journal, and oh, then yeah. Okay. yeah. I'll say it. Okay. 
Right. Okay. Right. So you guys figure out what you want to do. So I think that the, the best course of action would probably be to head into where the spout was, given that that seems to be some kind of travel blockade that is now gone. Uh, okay. All right. Uh, I'm, I'm with you on that one. Uh, all right. Look, there's a lot of diving stuff in the back. So perhaps whatever we're looking for is underwater. If I were still in aisle, I'd be able to harness the law of magic so that I, I can make us all breathe underwater, but I don't think I can do that here. That's too bad. If we were still in the living lands, we might could find some some of the uh, kelp that lets us breathe underwater. As it were, I think most of you should be able to use these. Yeah, I, I just think- kind. Of- I just kind of try and fumble at them to see how I would even be able to get this to work on me. Mm-hmm. No, I don't think they're dimensionally suited for me either. Yeah. Uh, Let's say I this. Bet it, work. it would probably be much easier for Mo to modify one of these suits than it will be for Thuban. Unless you had like three weeks and a massive sewing machine, <laughs> which we don't. I mean, it, it, it's possible that I could I could squeeze into one. I mean, I, I I'd have to do it out of my Rocket Ranger uniform, but mm-hmm. now here's I, the qu- now here's I'm the sure. Qu- yeah. Oh, sorry, you first. I was just gonna say. I mean, I might could squeeze into it. I mean, I'm. I'm only a little bit bigger than your average human, and I mean, it's fabric, so the fact that I'm jointed a little differently, uh, I mean, the only thing that would really be a problem is my tail, but I could probably, mm-hmm. bear, the, I could probably de- bear the discomfort of um, putting that down one of the pant legs. I mean, uh, I, 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 I might could force it, but um, I, I don't know. We'd have to try. Uh, but I don't know about um, the band. Yeah, what's up? Well, uh, according to you know, according to what was said, it says these are old style waiting dive ara- diving apparatus with air tanks. Mm-hmm. It, if any, I don't know if any of you ever saw that Cuba Gooding Jr. Um, movie where he was at, he was doing dive stuff, but I think that's approximately what we're talking about. Yep, that wasn't exactly. really cloth. That wasn't really cloth, and it wasn't uh, really. It was literally like. Yeah, it was a heavy Almost canvas. Clean. Right. It's yeah. a heavy canvas with a rubber interior. And and a whole lot of metal like rings in it. hmm I don't see unless we do some like remanufacture, I don't see there's gonna be a whole lot of ability to put uh uh That's actually what I wanted to ask about next. I just mentioned the whole like uh, as I owe cantrips thing. I know I don't have the perk that lets me use that outside of aisle itself, but since I have a pretty high alteration skill, would it be possible for me to magically jimmy this thing so that at least the parts of me that need to breathe can fit inside this suit? Okay, so <laughs> how, how, well, the parts of you that need to breathe are everything. That's um, fair. And you're, you're not going to be able to float in that if you fit everything inside. So, trying to get something around your core. Let's see. Okay, let's see what kind of uh, uh, spells you have. Oh, I got to pop this open. Okay, so mm-hmm. let's see. Sudden burial is not going to help. Hellfire possibility rend. Whoa, 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 whoa. Sorry, I was, clo- I was closing <laughs> those so they wouldn't take up space. Disguise enemy skeleton, create zombie, speak with dead, curse, banish ward enemy, command undead doom, fighting tendrils. Uh, let's see. Instinctive magic. Okay, instinctive magic really doesn't help here. Does anybody. Yeah, that's. Uh, hang on. Let me kind of switch off of roll 20 for a second so that I can get that diving suit. That's uh, that top picture right there. That is kind of what the uh, sun blades look like. Um, Let me get over there so that I can see what's going on. Okay. And then, yeah, the diving bell suit that you see in that bottom picture on Discord. 
um, that's approximately what you're dealing with. Okay, so I'm basically SOL. <laughs> basically, yeah. un unless somebody's got a way to, to reform things through uh, magic or psionics or, or anything like that. No, it looks like you're going to have to stay and guard the plank. All right. Okay. Um, can, can we show him how to use any... Do these dive suits have radios? Can we communicate between each other and the plane? Radio doesn't work underwater anyway. Uh, right. Is there a radio in that helmet? Um, is there a radio? Yeah. Yeah, well, the... the the radio on the seaplane still works, and you can figure out how to get communicating uh, with that. Uh, let's see. Oh, I didn't hit plus. Would you just quit? These are some freaky deaky diving suits that you're mm -hmm. showing us. Mm -hmm. That sure was. Are. That one screwed up his head. I don't know if I'd want to wear the that. The guy from the SpongeBob movie wore. <laughs> <laughs> That's apparently a real suit. Yes, they used to wear them all the time, and they kind of really fit in in. Uh, no, those guys mm -hmm. are the living land. They, they they're Nile Empire. That's all right. I can move them in a minute. Um, anyway, yeah, they they kind of really work in the Nile Empire because it's a twenties slash thirties pulp style uh, place. So, let me ask a question first off the the Rocket Ranger suit. I don't know much about rocket ranger shoots other than they're annoying and slow but um the the do you like can you like steal that up no Complete? no no okay. no it, it, it wasn't it wasn't made at all for that no okay um second question is does it work underwater no well i guess that would be a question for the gm to like you know make a the, decision the rocket on. ranger suit no, it's not supposed to work under underwater at all. Um, in mm -hmm. fact, if I am not mistaken, there's a way that you can seal it up, uh, but it's a it's an enhancement. Yeah, I think there might be an enhancement to it, but I, I, I don't have it if there is. Well, let's see. Okay. Just third to, question. Just third question for my own personal benefit: Can can I fly and or shoot in one of these tanks? Um. No. Good to know. Will, will these uh, sun blades work underwater? Um, you won't know until you try and activate one. <laughs> I stick one on your water and press. You could. You could open up the hatch on the on the side of the aircraft, the main entry, and uh, and try and stick it in the water and turn it on. Yeah, might as well. Okay. So Let's you do that, it. and it works. 